take this group in Petersfield and we're going to go whoosh to Antikara. So that's in the hills above Malaga. It's rather like if you've ever been on those planes where you come into the heat and oh, And it's like that, it's one of those moments. Now I've not been a very good host because I've dropped you at the bottom of Antikara and I said I want you to walk up to the square, it's only 20 minutes and I'll meet you there while I park the bus. But if you weren't hot and really, really bothered, you, you would be at the end of a 50 minute trek up that hill to get to the square because the heat is under missing, and we're talking 35, 40, solid sun and no shade. You are dripping, you are sweating, you are really fed up, and the heart, oh, the heart is really racing. But Tony kind of repairs the damage. I have a bar, so we, we go into the bar. It's all laid out. You've got your big, cold, beautiful jars of uh, iced tea, and lemonade, and of course, Cerveza, San Miguel, all ready. We take a long, Spaces. Climate hot, phenol cold. By frosty glass, our heroes stand. Tailored dress, beside the stall. Gaucho boot, gleaming rest. Lean, defined, clear, bright eyed, measured six. In easy time, Fino man, distilled dry strength, olives, oil, hardboard decks. It's probably about five o'clock and you've had more than enough cervezas. And the only question on the lips is, Tony, where the hell can we stay? I need a hotel, I need to sleep to recover. Not a problem, let's go to the motorway, let's go between Malaga and Sevilla. It's only 20 minutes. Let's go to the best all-night truck stop, hotel, restaurant, bar in all the world called La Yedra. But like me, you have a restless night. It's something to do with a fan that doesn't work and the fact it's so damn cold in Spain. And you wake up and you hear, you hear that muted but intriguing sound from the bar downstairs and, and that sense of laughter and be part of it. So you go downstairs. <coughs> I'll tell you a little bit about, if you don't know what you may, about coffee in Spain. We're talking about from dawn to dusk. And we're talking about the sunshine represented by milk and the espresso, the bean, is the night. You could have a cafe cortado if you would like. A very small uh, espresso with a dash of milk. You could have a longer cafe sombre, mainly milk, with a shot of coffee. They stand at the bar. The trucker's first stop, silently sit themselves awake with a shot of Café Sombre Grande. Café Ombre Grande. Rich, strong espresso, sun-steamed milk, well-dressed machismo class in a tall glass. And finally, bring you inland, let's go to my local, which is below the Torcal mountain range, and it's one of these Andalusian hill Towns are almost lost in time, you feel. And it's about five kilometres from our finger, our place that we're in, in the hills in the country, the Campo. And uh, you arrive at that square through narrow streets, one of which, if I remember, is cobbled. And you're flanked by the whitewashed, terrace type packed housing. And like that initial moment when I said, feel hot, feel in Spain, there's a moment, bang, when you hit that small original square and you think, this is quite a special place. It's a bygone age. It actually still hasn't quite gone by. And it's a bit of a privilege to be there. And maybe Spain is a bit like that. You could define it by places like that, where you're talking about the spaces and the silence between stuff happening. It's also about a listening ear. I've been trying to convince Julie Andrews for the best part of a year that the hills are not alive with the sound of music, <laughs> but they are alive with the sound of listening. And to as ever thus in Villanueva, you're having your coffee, and uh, the silence is just, oh, it's there, it's so noisy. But yes, obviously, punctuated by noise, by cars, by scooters, which is a modern phenomenon, and a lot of that going on, but also by conversation. And if you can imagine this small square cobbled, and it's got its fountain, 
it's a bigotry fountain, it's got three or four empty benches because most of the time the place is empty. And it, over there in the shade, that blob of green, dark, strong green that holds the secrets of the oranges, I see a bench full of old men, 10 or 12 of them, anchovied, sardined like a can on that bench. I guess the oil of communication is helping all that camaraderie and also the shade must help. Two things before the final moment then to relate it. The first is that young men are on, out of work in Spain and the economy is a hell of a bad place to be in Spain. And they say 50% in the hill, it's got to be 90% in Villa Nueva. But they have their scooters and they have their camaraderie and they get together and that's good. And the other thing is that of the three bars, the one I'm having the greatest difficulty of getting into is Bar Jimenez, which is the original local bar there. It's a male macho preserve. It's taken me a year to find, to feel sort of comfortable going in that bar. <laughs> seriously, seriously. So I thought, I was at loss and lost. Now, how the hell do I get you in? I realised, what we're going to do? We'll do the thing they do in movies. Let's freeze frame the action. So there is Paco doing his bar thing and whoosh. So in that moment, we'll get you all in, sneak you in round the back, get you in the corner there, give you a drink, make sure the shade's there. You've got a view of the bar, you've got a view of the square. <clears throat> so Saturday afternoon, evening, Malaga doing well, and they're playing, let's say Barcelona, the crowd's becoming quite large in the square. Signs. Outside, young men, no, start again, signs. Outside, young braves hold tribal greetings above the roar and snort of scooter defying traditions. <coughs> hey, Baco, hey, Miguel, que tal? Normal. Inside, aloof, thick-skinned elders hold wisdom and put their world to rise. But callous hands can't help themselves. Embellishing with gestures, both poignant and nuanced. Stories of old and the defiance of youth. Thank you.